I remember how mind blown I was when I got taught all the toxic erosion and burn symbols back in science class. And then she went out after that and just started looking at the back of every product like, hey, is there a symbol on this? Workplace training is quite tedious and they usually tell you things that you've heard a million times before. So it's like, please just stop wasting your breath. But despite all that training, you'd think we'd be better with toxic chemicals and substances in the workplace, but you'd be wrong. And if it's not in our workplace, then we're trying to snort it or sniff it or get high off of it. We're just not a very careful species. What is up you guys? Hope you're having an awesome day. I'm your host Eamon Hassan and welcome back to another video. Today we're getting corrosive with the top 10 most toxic substances in the world. Come on, you had to have loved that one. Starting us off at number 10, we have botulinum toxin A, also more commonly known as Botox. You might be thinking, what? How is Botox toxic if people by the millions are putting it in their face? Microdoses of the substance in plastic surgery or just aesthetic procedures relax and sort of paralyze your muscles, which in turn reduces wrinkles, slims your jaw, and more depending on where you're injecting it and why. My mom's a dermatologist, so I'm around Botox talk all the time, so this really doesn't phase me, but believe it or not, it's still one nature's most toxic substances and any more than a microdose is sure to kill you. One gram of it can kill a million people and a couple kilograms, that can wipe out the world. Coming in at number 9 is nicotine. All the smokers, please don't come attacking me in the comments. I grew up in an Arab country, I would smoke shisha all the time, I'm not against you at all, I'm with you. But this one is most commonly used in microdoses obviously in cigarettes and stuff, but since it's one of the most potent toxins in the world, any more than a microdose is a no-no. It's highly addictive in low doses, but if you expose yourself to high doses or the pure form of it, it is fatal. It was originally created for farmers to kill pests on their crops. Pest killer in our lungs, gotta have it. Now, tobacco companies love it because in microdoses, the nicotine itself won't kill you, but it'll keep you addicted and coming back for more. But don't fool yourself, this chemical is not safe. Nicotine toxicity can lead to heart failure and death. But I'm sure you got all that from the horrific graphic pictures on a cigarette pack. I don't smoke cigarettes, I'm just letting you know. I don't have anything against people that smoke cigarettes. I'm gonna stop talking now. At number 8 we have strychnine. Now this substance is mostly used as a pesticide to kill birds and rats and it's extremely toxic. If inhaled, swallowed or absorbed, it causes a certain kind of poisoning that leads to severe muscle contractions and then death by asphyxia. The muscle contractions get so bad that your body will actually contort to the point of broken bones and torn muscles and ligaments. Symptoms occur 15 to 60 minutes after contact and the minimum lethal dose for a human is anywhere from 30 to 120 milligrams. But fun fact, they come in seed form, so the poison is only effective if the seed is chewed or crushed before you swallow it. If you swallow the seed whole, you may not get poisoned, so... There's that. Filling at number 7 slot is the Inland Taipan. This extremely dangerous snake has an 80% mortality rate and can inflict what is considered to be the most toxic bite of any snake. The venom of one bite from these slithering beasts is enough to kill 100 humans. Like most snake venoms, organ failure, nausea, diarrhea, etc. then all quickly escalate until certain death. Unless, of course, the anti-venom is readily available and administered rapidly. Found in Australia, these snakes are considered shy and are found in extreme extremely remote areas, so luckily they rarely encounter humans, but if you're that unfortunate 1% of people that does encounter it, good luck to you. Now at number 6 is mitotoxin. This highly potent toxin is found in single celled organisms in the ocean which then attach themselves to fish. Exposure to this chemical is simply a case of wrong place, wrong time. If you see a bloom of algae in the ocean, this chemical could very much be present. One of the most complex non-protein molecules found to be produced by any organism. Mitotoxin toxin causes rapid heart failure and is nearly impossible to treat. Nearly impossible means basically impossible and that means a surefire death which is a no bueno. No bueno, amigo, muerto, muerte. That means death, bitch. Coming in at number 5 is potassium cyanide. So this highly toxic compound actually looks like sugar and dissolves quite easily. It's known for being the suicide chemical and I believe it was used by Jim Jones during the Jonestown massacre. Another infamous victim of this pill was actually Eva Braun, Hitler's longtime partner. Apparently it tastes bitter and acrid and sort of causes a burning sensation. The effects of potassium cyanide and sodium cyanide are the exact same by the way for anyone that was wondering. When taken in pill form you are likely to die in just a 
few minutes. At first, you lose consciousness, then you may convulse, and then finally, you die when your brain dies, also known as cerebral hypoxia. Now, at number four is ricin. This one is produced in the seeds of castor oil, paint, and a few rice grains worth of this toxin can kill you. Even the dust of this stuff coming into contact with your eyes can be fatal. Ricin did not come to play around. Ricin effectively blocks the assembly of amino acids into protein in the body, which causes the initial symptoms of pain, inflammation, and then progresses into severe nausea and diarrhea. Organ failure and shock due to blood loss via the excess diarrhea and vomiting cause almost certain death. But there is a loophole. Oral exposure to ricin is a lot less toxic, so at least there's that saving grace. Antidotes are very few and far between, so I think it's best to avoid ricin at all costs. Filling at number three saw is batrochotoxin. This cardio and neurotoxic chemical is found in some beetles, a few bird species found in New Guinea, and some Colombian frogs. Quite eclectic, isn't it? This shit is extremely potent and poisonous and usually lives on the frog's skin. With no antidote, should you get infected by this stuff, there is little to no chance of survival. So, I mean, those are slim pickings, you feel? This chemical mainly attacks the brain and a heart, it stops your nerves and muscles from functioning, and fun fact, it was used in the past for poison arrow tips. The more you know. Now at number two, we have the chemical VX, aka acetylcholine. Now, if you've ever watched First 48 or any murder docuseries, you have most likely heard this stuff mentioned before. You know those movies where something's just poured into a person's drink and after a sip they effectively just die on the spot? That's VX for you. Dramatic in its finishing fashion, if I do say so myself. I like it. It was initially developed as a nerve agent for warfare and it continues to serve just that purpose. Symptoms can be summed up as fatal muscle contractions, and while there are effective antidotes, they must be administered within a short period after exposure and usually don't prevent at least some permanent damage. So you're not walking away unscathed, that's for damn sure. And finally, at number one is polonium. While extremely rare and only naturally found in small amounts in uranium ore, a lethal dose for a human is only seven trillionths of a gram. Like, are you kidding me? That's nothing. Can you even see that with the naked eye? I didn't think so. Found in extremely trace amounts on tobacco leaves, this stuff is considered responsible for the associated associated lung disease as well. Both toxic and highly radioactive, should you be unlucky enough to come in contact with polonium, there is simply no hope for you, so you may as well say your goodbyes, rewrite your will if you have to, and regret all the things you didn't check off on your bucket list. Sucks to suck. And that is it for today's video guys, have you ever come into contact with any of these substances? Botox and nicotine literally don't count, they're too common, I, I'm not taking your answer if that's your answer. Let me know in the comments below, and I guess if you don't let me know then you clearly had too much of that substance and I'll probably be dead. Anyway, I've been your host for this one, Eamon Hassan, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye! <laughs> Starting us off with number two, wait, let me just say this. Botulinum, 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 okay. <laughs> Starting us off at number 10, we have bot. <laughs> Believe it or not, it's still one of nature's most toxic. <laughs> Sorry, can we go back? <laughs> now this substance is most commonly used as a hydrochloric deep. Symptoms occur 15 to 60 minutes after contact and the minimum <coughs> Symptoms occur 15 to 60 minutes after <coughs> Sorry Sis <coughs> Symptom <coughs> Like most snake venoms, organ failure Failure <laughs> Filling at number 3 saw is Batricota <laughs> I don't know Batricotoxin Batricotoxin Bat Batra Batra, batra cotoxin. But how do I make it sound like a real word?